What tips would you have for someone with regards to light exposure, given that that's the other sort of main external cue we're talking about here? What are some of the things that that you do at home, perhaps Sachin, or you advice that you would give a, a friend if they asked you this question? So there are two aspects to it. When, when we talk about security and rhythm, it's always timing matters. So, the, so timing can make good light junk or the junk light good. Uh, so in that sense, we need bright light during daytime. Everybody needs that. And we should go out and get some daylight. But as the evening rolls in, two to three hours before we go to bed, our body actually prepares to go to sleep. So even if we are not ready, our body starts the preparation by secreting a little bit more melatonin and cooling us down and reducing our alertness so that we can fall into sleep. But when we get exposed to bright light, when I say bright light, it's um, it's 1000 lux of light. uh, If you want to know what is that light like, if you go to any grocery store these days, now, almost anywhere in the world, grocery stores and drug stores are very bright these days. So as you walk in within 15 to 20 minutes, that amount of light can reduce your melatonin level. Mm-hmm. And one thing is, as we are remodeling our uh, houses, we are putting more and more bright LED light and that's affecting our circadian rhythm. So the rule of thumb is don't put anything more than 40 watts of light in your living room or in your bedroom. Bedroom can be even dim. And when you are trying to change light switches, even go for the dimming switch so that you can dim down your light. Mm, okay. uh, so no bright light, at least for two to three hours before your bedtime will help you uh, to go to sleep. And also in our bedroom, there are a lot of um, electronics that can emit light, the indicators. So if you're sensitive to that, then try to even have an eye mask or sleeping mask handy. <laughs> so if you cannot control light, then at least... Mm-hmm. Get some darkness. And then in the daytime, of course, try to be outside for at least 30 minutes under bright daylight. You don't have to be under sunlight, but even on a cloudy day, being outside for 30 minutes is pretty good to resynchronize your circadian rhythm with the day-night cycle. Right. Yeah, I wonder if uh, maybe grocery stores and pharmacies after a certain time, like 6.30, 7pm, whether the, the lights in those stores should potentially change should they be should they be a little dimmer later at night well so that's what i say that (laughs) the the knowledge about light is actually used to keep the shoppers awake and alert so that they can spend more time (laughs) buying stuff and also keep their employees awake so that they don't (laughs) fall asleep yeah you're not buying a lot of food if you're asleep. Um, that's a little counterintuitive uh, for their shareholders. But also that makes me think when we're, when we're thinking about pharmacies, Sachin, what about if I just decide to hack my way to sleep and, and you mentioned melatonin there. Let's say I'm a university student. I'm up all night, lots of bright light, but I buy a melatonin supplement. Can I just do that? And is that a way of uh, being able to stay awake for a, a long period of time and get the deep rest that I need? Yeah, so that's a tricky question because you're trying to hack <laughs> by popping a lot of melatonin when our body actually doesn't produce it, uh, for example, during the daytime. So uh, there are actually conditions uh, in which the body does that naturally. Where There is a genetic condition where these patients they produce a lot of melatonin during daytime and less at night. And as a result, these kids, they stay up all night uh, feeling lonely and have some affective disorder. And then during daytime, they're also very sleepy and they're cranky. The trouble with um, uh, this approach is popping melatonin during daytime is not going to reset your clock. It's just trying to make you sleepy. But at the same time, a body's clock is telling our brain that it's not the time to sleep. So one may not get that restorative sleep. So for example, it's very difficult to be in bed continuously for six to eight hours during the day. And many of us who have tried it, it's very difficult because you, even if you have gone through an entire night of staying awake, you may sleep for two to three hours and then you wake up and then it's hard to fall back asleep because the rest of the body is on that clock. 